Well, we're at the start of this holy week that we put in our, our calendar. And we're, as we said before, we're looking back at the, the greatest week that truly happened in history. There were real people standing on the side of the road going into Jerusalem. Those were real days, real weather. God's plan was really getting carried out. This plan of salvation, getting carried out by him. So a, a quick, a quick build-up. This has been this has been three years of Jesus' ministry. He's been going around, there's been miracles, there's been teachings, healings, and now it's come to this time where he's come to Jerusalem for this this is a feast day. There's this feast of Passover where the population in Jerusalem is swelled. It's one of those feast days that everyone gathers there. So there's this huge crowd we can picture. Now, what I'd like to do is let's picture, maybe you can picture a, um, a movie scene or even just a, a you know, handheld picture of that crowd. And now let's narrow down at a person in that crowd because crowds are made of people. We're going to draw our attention just to individuals in that crowd. Why are they there? What's that person's background? Because everybody comes with their stuff, right? When you think of your relationship with God, you come with your background, your stuff, the things that make up you. The things that make up someone over here, your background, your church history, not the same as someone over here. We each come as the, the, with these different stories. You've had this uh, terrible tragedy in life. Not this person, they, but they've had this amazing event that impacted them. We all come with these unique things about us. So these people that are standing there that day in that crowd, they each have their own stories, their own shops, their own stores, their own cousins, things that make up their life. As this, this preacher from Galilee is coming in on a donkey. So we're going to look at a few of those people. And as we do that, let's remember that Philippians reading that, that Judy did, where Paul has written, this is like 30 years after, after Jesus, up in Philippi, you know, up towards, towards Greece, and written to people that had not seen Jesus, but they've encountered Jesus through someone sharing the word, through someone telling about Jesus or reading about Jesus. And when he writes to them, he says, have this in mind, um, have this mind as your way of thinking, this mindset. So we're going to ponder what mindset was he challenging them to have as we look at the crowds and we think about ourselves. So let's picture, let's narrow down, let's picture one person in that crowd and we'll just call him Amos, kind of typical Jewish name in that first century. Let's say Amos is a, a young man from Bethany. Bethany is nearby where, where Lazarus had recently been risen from the dead. And Amos had been there. Amos had heard about Jesus coming to town. He knew about Lazarus dying. Lazarus had been in his store a couple times. And he had gone out to say, well, Jesus has come to, to, see, come to his friend's funeral. And, and I've heard about him. And he closes up the shop. And he goes out there. And Lazarus is, is risen from the dead. He was there that day when Lazarus came out of the tomb. And he knew it was Lazarus. He'd been in his store. So let's picture the next few weeks for Amos. He knows there's something godly about Jesus. He's actually come in here for this Palm Sunday. What took place with Amos? Let's picture what influences he had. He encountered Jesus. What would you hope for Amos? That he would do with that encounter? Did he go back and, you know, work got busy. 
The, the kids had coughs. What did he do with encountering Jesus? Let's look at another person in the crowd. Asha. She's in the crowd. She has an encounter with Jesus. She's come from a little village in the north where her uncle and her brother are kind of some of the religious leaders in town. And, and she's heard about how one is supposed to have a relationship with God. And, and, and other people in town had gone out and they'd heard Jesus speaking. And they come back and they told her some things and she's wrestling with what voices to listen to. And they've come down to Jerusalem for the feast and as the king is going by on, on the donkey, he looks right at her. She has an encounter with Jesus. Her brother even says, hey, he's riding a donkey just like Solomon did coming in as king. What happens with Asha? What does she do with that encounter? What voices does she listen to? This is, the, this is what happens with the people in the crowd. We know some, some are puzzled about who Christ is. Some are, are witnesses to things that go on with Him. Some see what He shares and don't like it. Let's ponder what becomes of them. What influences came their way? What would you, what would you really hope happens with them? What are the, what are the ways there? Do they just get busy and not think about Him? Do they, do they think, He is special and I'm going to I'm going to listen, and I'm going to follow him. So that's the ongoing issue throughout, boy, all the centuries. We have those people in Philippi, 30 years later. They encounter Jesus. They start to have issues in town, and what do they do with their walk as believers? And what about us? You. You encounter Jesus. What do we do with that? It's life-changing. It's cosmic who He is. What do we let happen inside us, in our hearts? Jesus comes to Jerusalem that weekend to carry out a plan of salvation. People can't be with God. He comes to carry out this plan of salvation so that people can be with God. The king, as Zechariah described centuries before, the king comes riding on a donkey, righteous, meaning just in right with God. He's in right with God because he is God. And having salvation. So people, people know God's going to come and he's going to, he's going to, de- he, God's a warrior. And God's going to free us, the people of, of, the chosen people. They have an expectation. Because even in that same reading, it says he's going to set prisoners free. The Lord God will sound a trumpet like you do going into battle. He's going to save them. And Jesus does save that Holy Week. But not how anybody expected. All those dots throughout the Old Testament a king, a savior, a suffering servant. All the dots aren't put together yet. They don't, they don't see him. But he does have this great warrior victory by dying on a cross, by allowing himself to die on a cross. And when he rises to new life, This is all the plan of salvation for you who encounter Him. New life for people to have inside them just through faith in Him. Forgiveness. Freedom. The thought of, I can stand in God's presence through a Savior. So, He did this for you with your stuff going on, with your history, with your background that's different than everybody else's background. Let's think about those people in Philippi, those people in the crowd. 
What did they let impact them? What do you let impact you? Do we wander because so-and-so was mean to me, and so I'm going to live without Christ's peace? I feel depressed because I've had these, this relationship go sour in life. And I'm going to stay there and think about that. There's a pretty consistent thing throughout Scripture where God encourages us not to look at ourselves, but to look at Him. To stare at who Jesus is. To get outside of ourselves, our feelings, our troubles, our schedules. We said we were going to think of that reading from Philippians. Paul writes about the amazing humbleness of Almighty God coming and walking amongst us. I thought of this yesterday when I went to the grocery store. There was a, there was a bumper sticker. Someone said, my other car is whatever it was. And I, and, I, and I just had the sermon on my mind. And I was thinking, oh, that's Christ is coming in thinking, you know, my other job is. <laughs> He's, he comes humbly as one of us. Think of how humbling that is. But he does it out of love for you. Have this mind among yourselves. What mind? What mind does Paul want us to have? which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, clung to, held on to, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For the purpose of us, he followed the Father's will. This is the mindset that we're asked to have. We pray that. Your will be done. And our challenge is to step outside of ourselves, our stories, our backgrounds, the kids' coughs, the thing going on at work, and remember, you are a saved, loved, forgiven child of God. You have this special gift of having been rescued. And in the midst of whatever's going on, you've been rescued. He saved you. And you get to live with with his peace and his joy inside. That's the the wonder of us that we get to have as believers. So let's picture the people in the crowd. The people in Philippi. Did they let that slip through their fingers? that opportunity to live life to the full. And we think of ourselves. And the thought of cherishing that gift and letting it flourish inside us, following the Father's will, as it said, He wants the best for us. And you get to walk with that all your days, knowing that He has saved you until that great day that you do see Him face to face. Amen.